Bible Church San Jose I want to welcome you to this beautiful Sunday morning thank you for taking time to worship and celebrate the Lord with us this morning hope you had a chance to enjoy worship and uh, just some time uh, in the Lord uh, we have been extended with our shelter in place uh, through the end of May and I'm hoping that your um, your strength and your attitudes and just your your spirits are are uh, doing okay and and that God is allowing this time to be a, a time of uh, just personal uh, interaction with with him and with you uh, we've been talking uh, the last few weeks a series about greater than my fear how God is greater than our fear talked about the fear of death the fear of loss uh, this week we're talking about the fear of not enough, and next week we'll be talking about the, the fear of the storm. But this morning, um, I just wanted to share with you some uh, personal struggles that I've been hearing about in a lot of the uh, different conversations that I've been having. Um, you know, this, per, this uh, current situation has really put a lot of stress and just a lot of struggle in, in people's lives. And, you know, I've, uh, I've talked about, um, you know, how the, the current situation has brought about a lot of uh, the, the struggles with shortages and so on and so forth. We talked about the toilet paper. We talked about the hand sanitizers and all the different things that people have been struggling to find. And, and now we just hear word that there could be a shortage of, of meat because of the processing plants. About 25% of them have shut down because of the spread of the, of the virus. Um, I've, I've talked to people about 
their uh, financial concerns, they're, they're waiting on that stimulus check, or they've been furloughed or laid off from work, or the, the threat of that happening. Um, some have lost their jobs. Uh, business owners that I've spoken to are uh, just uh, lying in wait for the PPP, which is the Paycheck Protection Plan that the government is, uh, is promising the small business owners. But that has been just a source of contention and frustration for many of our small businesses. And we've, we've talked about, and, and you know, the current situation with businesses um, shutting down and going bankrupt. And it is just a, a, a time of, of great un uncertainty. Many people are worried about their resources. You know, they're worried about being able to care for their family. They're, they're worried about their own personal health. Um, they're worried about the personal impact uh, going forward for, uh, from all of these different uh, situations that have, that have come up. You know, the question that I, I've heard from several people is, you know, how and, and, and when and if we will recover? Will, will, will this be uh, the, uh, as we head into this recession, and even somebody called out the possibility of a Great Depression, and God forbid that happening, and, and hopefully that, that's just not a, a panic setting in, but the reality of the difficulty of our situation is uh, very, very real and very, very, very close to home. You know, I want to um, uh, share with you about another struggle that we battle in regard to this, and this is long before COVID-19 came into play. And, and I believe it's even brought more to light during this time of quarantine and personal challenge, and that is the struggle of, am I enough? Uh, who am I? How, how can I personally um, uh, get through all of this? And you know, one of the things that I struggle with is, you know, we want to get out and do, but we can't because of the quarantine, because of the restrictions, you know. As a follower of Christ, um, I sometimes question my own personal significance in light of God's greater plan. Uh, questions flood my mind. You know, am I doing enough? Am I being enough? Am I good enough? Am I capable enough? And, and whether that's personal or professional, you know, these are things that, that I wrestle with. Um, you know, my insecurities that I have, the problem with that is they become the measuring rod of my success in my relationship with God and with others. And I wrestle with the confidence of, of who I am as well as who I am becoming, whether it's in, in Christ, as a husband, as a father, as a friend, as a pastor. This is a very real personal struggle for me. And that's the, that's the concern or fear of, of being not enough. And, and this world puts so much pressure on us to, to live to a certain standard that, um, that I have to wrestle with uh, that standard in, in who I am trying to be and who I believe I am becoming in Christ. I, I read this quote, I'm not sure who said it, but the person that wrote it said this. They said, my greatest struggle is I don't feel like I'm enough. My track record proves the truth. And that is, I am not successful enough. I am not a good enough parent. I am not attractive enough. I am not enough to ever be loved. You know, personally, I'm not one who struggles with being loved by God or questioning that. You know, I, I, I get that. But my struggle is with how much God will trust me with his bigger picture plan. I wrestle with my performance. I wrestle with whether or not God is pleased with me or that he just tolerates my petty efforts. You know, I, I, I really 
um, uh, reflect or I, I really uh, associate with that old cliche that um, I'm really good at doing the work of the Lord, but not at serving the Lord of the work. I'm busy, I stay active, but am I really serving the Lord of the work or am I just doing the work of the Lord to gain my acceptance? You know, my, my faith becomes a model uh, for the sin of self-sufficiency and self-reliance. Uh, I was taught to work hard. I was taught to only ask for help if I really need it or if I couldn't get it done uh, alone. I was taught it was a weakness to let someone else do the job if that was a job I could have done myself. You see, that sin of insecurity, that sin of uh, whether it's a body image or it's uh, a, 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 mis or a dysfunctional um, social uh, ability to connect with others, um, it's the question of, you know, what I bring or don't bring to the table. How does all this develop who I am. You know, there's a story in the Bible that I'd like to uh, reflect on with you, if you would, please. Turn with me in your Bibles uh, to Exodus chapter 3. And a little bit of uh, history. For centuries, the people of Israel, uh, who are God's chosen people, have lived as aliens in the nation of Egypt. And for most of that time, they have lived as, as slaves. They're starting to cry out for deliverance and and God is, hears their cry, and he's preparing for their deliverance uh, that is just at hand. There's a Jewish child that is born, and his, his name is Moses. And he is divinely rescued from a decree of death that Pharaoh had put out against the Israelite nation to, to kill all the firstborn uh, boys to decrease the, um, the, the population of Israel that was overwhelming Egypt at the time, causing Egypt great fear that Israel could turn against them uh, and over, overcome them as a nation. And so Pharaoh's daughter uh, divinely, as I said earlier, divinely finds Moses, rescues him, and he is raised in Pharaoh's court. He is, as an adult, he defends his kinsmen by killing an Egyptian, and he then flees to the land of Midian to spare his life because Pharaoh has put a hit out on him. And then there, it is there that God appears to him in a burning bush, as we read in Exodus chapter 3, to prepare the people of Israel for their deliverance. And in verse 6 it says, God said to Moses, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And at this, how did Moses respond? He hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. I, I get that being in the presence of God in a very real form would, would cause one to want to hide their face or to bow down in, um, in worship, uh, but there's more to this uh, within the story itself, and we'll talk about that in, in, in just a moment. So who was this, this Moses? Well, in the New Testament, Stephen, before he is stoned, tells, tells the story of Moses and the deliverance of, of Israel and how God set them on the path of, of, of being his, his promised children. Uh, being led into the land of, of, of plenty. And so he says this about Moses in Acts chapter 7, verses 20 through 29. But I just want to highlight a couple of verses. And uh, verse 22 especially, it says, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was powerful in speech and action. Powerful in speech and action. Well, we find out in the story in Exodus 3 that Moses didn't feel powerful. Moses didn't feel capable. And we'll see what, how God answered that in just a moment. But 25 says Moses thought that it, his own people would realize that God was using him to rescue them, but they did not. You see, Moses thought that, that he was all that. You know, he thought that, that he was someone special. 
and that, and that he was going to be the great deliverer of Israel. And we know that later on it was, but, but Moses was trying to do it in his own strength and his own power. Well then, uh, verse 29 says, when Moses heard this, and that was when Pharaoh put the hit out on his life for killing uh, an Egyptian, he fled to Midian, where he settled as a, foreign, a foreigner and had two sons. Well, what happened to Moses when he fled? He, he fled to an area that was safely away from Egypt and into the, the, the fold or the family of a, of a shepherd by the name of Jethro. And there he found his wife and married and had two children and he settled. So for 40 years, Moses settled. You see, he sought to fulfill God's plan by his own strength, his own, own flesh. You know, he spent the first 40 years of, uh, of his life in the, in the schools of Egypt, training to be something, training to be someone. Well, then he spent the next 40 years in Midian, where he spent in the isolation of the desert, learning that he was nobody and that he was nothing asking them himself the question, who am I? And then his last 40 years of his life, Moses um, uh, spent learning how God could take nothing, himself, nothing, and make, it a, and make him into one of the greatest leaders in history. What a, an amazing story. The first 40 years, it was all about Moses and, and everything that he thought he was. The second 40 years, realizing that he was nothing. And then the third 40 years, seeing how God could use him, even at his lowest, and make him a, a, a great man of God. You see, at this particular moment in the desert, before this burning bush, before God, Moses' problem was not questioning whether or not he could do it. His problem was that he had already believed that he couldn't. And I think that's a lot of our problems when it comes to interaction with God, that we've already resigned ourselves to the fact that we're not enough, that we are not enough. And so let's see what it says as we follow more of the, the third chapter of Exodus of the conversation that God has with Moses. And it goes like this. And the Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. He said, I have heard them crying out because of the slave drivers. He said, I am concerned about their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey. He says, and now the cry of Israel has reached me. And he said, I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. And he says this to Moses. This is the commission that he's given to Moses. A man who already feels like God's abandoned him and forgotten him. And now God is showing up and he's saying to him, so now Go, so now go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. And how did Moses respond? I think just like any of us would have responded. Here we are, minding our own business, already settled in our, our mindset of how our life is going to go forward. And he responds this way. Moses said to God, who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He's already proven himself to Pharaoh, to Egypt, to Israel, and to God that he's a failure. You see, he had already failed at this once. And he's thinking, how can God use me a second time? And I'm so glad we serve a God of second chances and I don't know about you, but for me, third and fourth and fifth and sixth and so on and so on and so on, chances. So thankful that God gives me opportunities 
to find out who I am in him. And God said this. God said, I will be with you. I will be with you. Now this is something really insignificant to us if all we're looking at this is a story that's being told about some guy back in history that made a difference in, in, uh, in the way he lived his life. You see, the real impact of this comes when we take what God is saying to Moses and we're realizing that he could very well be speaking to us today that same thing. Go, he said, and I will be with you. Man, I tell you what, it's, it's reassuring to know that if we have that commission of God to go, then we have his promise that he is going to go with us. And Moses said to God, you think it would be all over and Moses would be all on board, but he's got another thing before God and he says this, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, hey, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And then what if they ask me, well, what's his name? Then what shall I tell them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. And God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. He said, this is my name forever. The name you, Moses, shall call me from generation to generation. We are that second generation in that, in that, in that phrase. We are to be able to say the same thing, that we are, we are uh, sons and servants of the Most High God. And so God's response to Moses' question, who am I that I should go, one, to Pharaoh, two, to bring Israel out of Egypt, he said in 12, I will be with you. And in verse 14, I am who I am. So there's three things I just want to kind of focus on uh, in, our, in our message this morning, and that is we need to take him at his word. And number two, we need to remember his faithfulness. And number three, we just need to learn to trust him. We just need to trust him. So we need to take him at his word. The first thing that I want to talk about. You see, Abraham is being referenced here. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Abraham was the, was the, the greatest example of one who took God at his word. Paul writes in Romans chapter 4, in reference to the life that Abraham lived, in reference to his forefathers, yet Abraham... He did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God, but was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. I love verse 21. Being fully persuaded that God had power to do what he had promised. Verse 22, this is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Abraham believed in God's promises. Abraham took God at his word because he believed God would fulfill his word. That God and his word were enough, and he believed it, and, and, and lived his life out in his journey that way. You see, God is saying through the life of Abraham, through the life of Isaac, and through the life of Jacob, that I am enough. That I am enough. As I was with your forefathers, I will be with you. I will be everything you, need. you see, it was Abraham who learned God's name of Jehovah Jireh. You see, he learned that God was his provider, which is what that means. When God provided a sacrifice ram in place of Isaac, when God asked him to sacrifice his son, testing Abraham's act of obedience and faithfulness. And as a result of that, Abraham learned that God's name, one of God's names, was Jehovah Jireh, God my provider. The second thing we do is we remember his faithfulness. We remember his faithfulness. Because he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that means there's history. That means there's a relationship. 
That means there is a knowledge of, of how God was in, in the past. You see, the more history we have uh, with God, the less excuse you should have not to trust Him. Let me say that again. The more history you have with God is the less excuse that you should have and not to trust Him. You see, God's ask and God's task for Moses was bigger than Moses, was greater than anything that Moses could accomplish. And Moses knew that after he, he tried and failed. And so yet Moses misunderstood God in this encounter, in this back and forth dialogue. He misunderstood him and he thought that it had to all be about him the way he was before when he knew that he couldn't do it that he didn't have the respect of the people and he didn't have the leadership capability or ability to do what God was asking him to do. And you see, God wasn't asking Moses to step up. God was asking Moses to step in to him. Too many times we think that it's all about us when it's all about us trusting God and trusting our history with God and all the times that God's provided for us and that God has come through for us. You see, all Moses had to do was remember God's faithfulness in the past. And as God was reflecting on Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he didn't have to go back that far. All he had to do was go back to the remembrances of his mom. You see, God gives his name to, to Moses when he says, I am. And that name I am in the English is Lord, all capital, L-O-R-D, Lord. But in the Hebrew, it is the word Yahweh. And it's built on the word for I am. So whenever we see Yahweh or the Lord, that God is saying, I am. Everything you need, I am. Whenever we use that word, Yahweh, that word Lord, God says, I'm sufficient enough for you. You see, Yahweh was not a new name to Moses, nor was it an unknown name. It appears more than 160 times in the book of Genesis alone. But here's the, here's the catch right here. Moses' mother's name was Jochebed. Jochebed. And that means Yahweh is my glory. All Moses had to do was remember his mother. And remember her name. And remember her relationship with God. For him to realize how, how God was faithful. And how God was, uh, was sufficient. And that God was enough. You see, God did not give Moses a previously unknown name of his. But the name that he had always known. Yahweh. Yahweh is my glory. Jacobet, his mom. You see, God called him back to the faith of not only his, the patriarchs, but also to the faith of his mother, which wasn't new to him, but was something that he should have been very familiar with. What's your history with God? What is your history with the Father? Has God answered prayers for you? Has God been there for you? Has he provided for you? You may be watching this morning and, and maybe you really don't have um, a, a deep or a long connection with God and you're just trying to figure all this out. You're just trying to understand a little bit more about who this God is that we're talking about. Well, I just want to encourage you that that those of us that have had relationship with him, that have known him, we can attest to the fact that God is faithful to those who, have, who know him. And the longer we know him, the more and more we know that God is faithful and that God is enough. The third thing I want to I wanna take a, a quick look at is just a very simple, we just have to trust him. And I know that that's easier said than done. And I know that for some people, that's, that's a big ask for them to just trust God. 
And you know, that's what our faith walk is all about. It's all about trust. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, that we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. John Piper said, nothing is more basic and nothing is more ultimate than the fact that God is. What is God? God is enough. God is sufficient. God is all we need. You see, in darkness, He is our light. In hunger, He is the bread of life. In death, He is the resurrection and the life. In uncertainty, He is the way. In confusion, He is the truth. In fear, He is our hope. In weakness, He is my strength. In want, He is my provider. And lastly, in pain, He is my healer. He is my healer. You know, we all have a personal estimation of ourselves for for some that uh, we think too highly of ourselves, that's a cockiness or a, uh, a, a sense of pride. And then for some of us, we don't think enough of ourselves, which is a sense of low self-esteem. You know, in some ways, we're not happy with, with ourselves. We're not happy with where we're at. Sometimes we're not happy with the person that we've become. We struggle with images of self-esteem and and uh, struggle with insecurities in our life. But one of the things that I'm, I am given hope in is when I read the story of, of uh, Moses is that, you know, God didn't forget him. God doesn't forget us. He waited until the right time to use him. See, God heard the cries, uh, uh, cries of Israel, and he had Moses tucked away for such a time as this. See, Moses wasn't ready Moses wasn't ready back then, but Moses was ready now because Moses realized that he was not enough and that he, need something, he needed something more for what God was asking, and that was God. You see, God met him where he was at, on Mount Horeb. And then later on in his ministry, we see where God called Moses up into the mountain, and Moses was ready then. He was ready to go. But right now, Moses is struggling. He's not ready. He's not even close. But God went to him. And he said, Moses, I am. Moses, I am. You see, God was seeking an instrument through which he might do his work. God is sufficient for any task he has called any of us to perform. You see, we exist. I believe we exist to spread a passion for the supremacy and the sufficiency of God. We are walking testimonies of God I am, God who is sufficient, God who is enough. Second Corinthians, Paul wrote in chapter 3, verses 4 through 6, he said, such confidence we have through Christ before God. Such confidence. What is that confidence? Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but that our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. He has made us competent. God becomes what we lack and what we need in our lives. C.S. Lewis said this, the more we let God take us over, the more truly ourselves we become. You see, God has created you in His image. He has given you works of service to do. He has given you great opportunities to serve Him and the capabilities that you have. But those capabilities aren't enough. You see, you, you're going through training, and God's preparing you to, to use the gifts that you have. But you, you cannot be successful, and you cannot do what He asks you to do on your own, by yourself, in your own strength and power. See, God is asking us, like He's asking Moses, to trust Him. 
to trust that he is enough to do the ask that he has that he has given to Moses you see fear is is our enemy and it's flamed by three things it's flamed by maybe a shame of the past maybe there's something in your past that you feel like God can't use you or doesn't want to use you or that God's not able to use you because you have a past well guess what we all have history we all have a past. Thank God he forgives us. Thank God he restores us. Or a lack of confidence. Maybe you just don't have the confidence that God needs you to have at this present time. But he'll give it to you if you would just trust him. Or maybe there's just overwhelming sense of insecurities. I mean, I, I battle with that in my own life. The, the not being good enough. Not being able enough not being smart enough. You know, that's, that's a real battleground for me. And so um, when, we, when we call ourselves out for being inadequate or for being incapable, we are calling God out for not being enough. We will learn that in our weakness, He can be our strength. That in our inadequacy, he becomes our sufficiency. And then all my excuses, all those things that I throw in his way, and if you read the story of Moses, you'll read where Moses threw excuse after excuse after excuse. And all God was asking for Moses was just his surrender to him. When he said, I am, I am sufficient. Paul also wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, he said, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest in me. Now, he's not saying that he doesn't want us to be strong. He doesn't want us to be capable. He doesn't want us to be educated. He doesn't want us to be prepared. He's not, he's not saying that. But he doesn't want us to rely on that. He wants us to trust him to take that, those things that he's given to us to the next level, his level. For what we do in our own strength and power brings us to a certain level, and that stays there. But when we trust him, he takes it to the next level, his level. F.B. Meyer said that there is no equivalent for God but God. No equivalent for God, but God. He said, if you place God on one side of your symbol of equation, that, that equal sign, God equals, there is nothing to put on the other side of that but himself. There is nothing to put on the other side of that but himself. You see, God is all we need when we learn to trust him in all we do. You know, we want to be known as strong. We don't want to be weak. We want to be known as independent, but not deeply dependent. We want to be known as self-sufficient, but not uncomfortably needy. You know, we want to be achievers and creators and healers and heroes. But in regard to that, J.I. Packer says this, We have nothing and have never had anything that we have not received, nor have we done anything good apart from God who did it through us. I thank God that he's given me strength and effort and ability. But I thank God that he, he made it so that I have weaknesses. That no matter how good I may be, I still need him. And I still am, uh, uh, I still am in need of of his working in my life. How did Moses end his race? You see, Moses, it says in Deuteronomy chapter 34, verse 7, it says, Moses was 120 years old when he died. Yet his eyes were not weak, nor his strength gone. Moses was energized. Moses was a different man. At 80 years old on that mountain, making excuses before God, 
by the time he died. He was, he was self-confident. He was powerful. He was energized. Why? Not because he, he made himself into a, a, a better man as a result of his failures, because that's what we're told to do. Make yourself a better man or a better woman because of your failures. But he realized that that man he was was that man he was when he died. But he was different because he allowed God to work in him to take that weakness so that God could reveal his strength in our lives. Why would people want to have what God has for us if they think what we have is our own? You see, God wants people to see his working in our life so that they would want what we have. And what I have is what God has given to me and what God continues to give to me. You know, one of our fears during this time of pandemic may be that we are too limited and finite to do what needs to be done. You know, we're struggling to find the cure. We're struggling to find the vaccine. Someone says that, any, any good thing that comes out of all of this research and study doesn't come from God, and I disagree. I really believe that God's going to utilize medicine and science and, and all, all the great minds and all the wealth and money that's being poured into this to bring healing to us. But God has a purpose for us in these days that's uniquely aligned with us. He knows what our gifts are. He knows what our abilities are. He knows what our passions are, our limitations, our temptations. He knows what He can do with us if we are fully His. And He wants to use us in ways that we can never imagine. I truly believe that God is enough for today. I truly believe that God will be enough for what we need tomorrow. Will you trust Him today, going forward, for all that He needs for you to be? You see, it's not about His provision for you, but it's all about His power for you to step up and trust Him and to be the person of faith that He needs you to be. You see, God has has asked us to, um, to, to trust Him, to believe Him, to look back at what He's done for us in the past. You see, God is good at leaving a track record of His own capabilities for us. And I don't know about you, but I just want to take this time to just express to God how much I trust Him. Would you bow your hearts with me in prayer as we, as we pray? Heavenly Father, we give you thanks that even in the midst of, of all that we may be going through, and some of us more than others, Father, I'm so thankful that you are enough. God, we, we thank you for your provision, for you watching over us, for your safety, for your protection. But God, for us personally, my psyche my emotions, my, my insecurities, um, all those things that I struggle with, God, when it come, even before this pandemic came, that defines me as a, as a person, a husband, a father, a pastor, uh, as a friend, as a human being. God, I wrestle with those things that, that cause me to question my own abilities my own uh, future as to who I am becoming. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Forgive me for when I question what you are doing in my life and who you have made me to be. God, I know that, that sometimes I fall and fail because of sin or because of my struggles, my insecurities. God, I'm so thankful for your forgiveness, but I'm thankful, God, for your reminder to me that I don't need to trust myself, I need to trust you. That who I am and who I'm becoming has been created uniquely by you. And that I need to trust you in the fulfillment 
of what you are, uh, are doing in my life and who you are creating me to become. Be with everyone this morning, Father God, where they're right out in their homes, in front of their devices, hearing these words. God, may they be encouraged to know that you are enough. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, Amen. Amen. As, um, as we head into worship in, in just a moment, uh, I, I just want to uh, ask you to uh, reach out to me, if you would, please, and, and how this message may have uh, touched your life. If maybe you're struggling in this area of not enough, I'd love to pray with you. If you go on to our website at www.sjobc.com, sjobc.com. I, I want to direct you to the area where the, the prayer uh, requests are. And if you could just go onto that, uh, that section, click onto that, and fill out that, that form uh, with a prayer request. That's in private, and only I will be able to see that. And uh, I'll be the only one reading that. And I would just love to know where you're at, what you're struggling with, and how I can pray with you for that. So God bless you. Have a great week in Him. As you, as you take these next few moments to, to worship, allow the words from this morning to speak to your heart. Much deeper.